Hello everyone and welcome back to another review. Today we're looking at the Atherin Genesis SD80 and this is in the Chicago Northwestern fantasy scheme that they did. Now Atherin had found out that Chicago Northwestern placed a promissory note ordering some of these and then in 1995 when the UPCNW merger happened and then basically these got canceled. But they uh, kind of got their hands on some of what the original plans are going to look like, release these. And this is a very nice locomotive. Paragon 2 sound, um, or excuse me, Tsunami 2 sound, not Paragon 2. Um, and this has a lot of great details on it and a lot of great sound stuff that we'll talk about. We'll show all of them, show the lighting, we'll make it dim in here so that you can see the different lighting effects that come on with it, everything like that. But let's start off with some details. Coming up here. You have some very nice photo etched, and I think you can kind of see that, walkways right there. Actual roller bearings that turn on all of your trucks, which is pretty neat. Individually applied grab irons, fully detailed cab interior. Moving back here, you do have vents with the see-through fans. You also have see-through vents here, which is a nice touch. Um, very nice details all the way around. You even have very nice uh, decals and lettering applied to it. Um, really like how it looks. I really do like the fact that it's an Operation Life Lifesaver excuse me, um, paint job, which you can see there and up here. Makes it nice. Lighted number boards, bright headlight, bright ditch lights, um, you know, MU cables, air hose, everything like that. It looks very nice from that side. Same at the back. And added, you have these nice, um, these are the extra knuckles that you have on locomotives that are usually mounted there. Those are usually mounted so that if you need to be a little more compatible with anything, you can uh, swap those out or use them as a spare if you break a knuckle somewhere. Um, but nice details there. You even have the uh, individual sanding line hoses, which you can kind of see down here and in here. Um, those look great. And... Um, you know, extra details here for more. And uh, overall, very, very nice looking locomotive. Lots of nice details as you can see that here. Okay, so we're gonna apply some track power quick and uh, let you hear the startup sequence and then go through a few of the sounds on it. Nice sounding locomotive. I know you can't probably see it very well, but um, we'll get the headlights and all the lighting turned on. Here's the horn. Sounds nice, the short version. Bell, and it's a little soft, which you can adjust if you want, but it sounds nice too. Nice sounds with notching up and down. There's a little bit of brake release in there too, which is uh, definitely neat. Um, some of the other sounds, we do have dynamic braking. Um, you do have a half volume button, so you can hit this and turn it down to half volume versus what it is full, which is kind of nice. Um, let's see, you have a straight to eight button, so you can full notch it up if you want. Uh, let's do that here. Even with that notch up, it's not terribly loud, which is nice too. It's a good balance of sound of when you're in your layout room. You also have a straight to idle button. There's um, the sound of coupling and uncoupling in here, which are pretty quiet and quick. Uh, there is a handbrake option as soon as that gets down to idle. Here's the handbrake. Uh, 
and release, which is quiet, but it's nice. Um, there's a fuel loading sequence, which is kind of neat. You can kind of hear some fuel being poured in there. And then, uh, it does have a uh, HEP mode, HEP mode, uh, let's see, 16. So you can use that as in that style if you want. You can hear that auto notch up as part of that. We'll go ahead and stop that. You can manually notch up and down. And one thing that they don't tell you in the instructions is that uh, you have to use the manual notch down to get the shutdown sequence. Like that. I'm going to make it dim in here and uh, show you the lighting effects on it and some of the lights that it comes with and how neat that looks. I'll be right back. One other thing I forgot to mention is a couple programming things I needed to change on this uh, from the factory. One is that the demonstration I'm going to show you of the auto notching up and down with the load of your train, you know, as you go around curves or up hills, it'll go up and down. Uh, that's disabled by default, so you need to actually go and enable that yourself and program it to calibrate it yourself. Uh, thankfully, I had this uh, well car train out, which is heavy and long, so that gives me a really good calibration of what uh, slow, non-kind of load feels like versus a, a high load, and then you can play with it from there. The other thing is that the ditch lights flashed by default on this one, which is more of like a Norfolk Southern type of thing or Conrail, um, which is a couple other paint jobs I think they have in this. And uh, so I did have to disable that. There's instructions on how to do that. But otherwise, everything else was set from the factory correctly. Horn, bell, uh, prime mover, all that stuff. You can change it if you want. If there, There's a bunch in there if you like the way that a different one sounds. But, um, you know, by default, this one sounds pretty good. But I did want to mention that. Chain. Okay, here we are at night. And as you can see, this has some very nice details. It's a little more unfocused. You can see the lighted number boards, headlight, ditch light. It's very bright, which is nice. So are the ditch lights, too. One other nice feature that we have, too, is right here under the trucks. And you do have the uh, track inspection lights, or the track inspection lights on the front here. And you can kind of see them there. I'll put my hand over so you can see it a little better. looks nice flip around to the rear and you can see that the uh, the number boards are still lit which is neat but if you come around to the rear rear number boards are now lit which is nice that rear headlight is also nicely bright right there and that's just a nice feature overall for it we're going to do some uh, run buys for you next and go from there and uh, talk about anything else that we might have forgotten. One other thing that I do want to mention is that this is a very heavy locomotive. It pulls very well and I think you guys would be very pleased with it if it's something that you're going to run with your trains. Also forgot to mention that the rear number boards stay lit even when you're going forward and that's a nice feature too not a lot of locomotives have that and uh, it's neat to see and not to mention a lot of up locomotives started taking away the number of boards that were lit in the rear
All right, guys, there you have it. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this video and uh, that it will contribute some to maybe your decisions about whether or not to get it. One thing I forgot to show you is speed step one. This is speed step one. Really nice, slow, gentle movement. There you go. If you uh, like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, ask any questions. I'm always happy to talk with people and uh, learn from each other, things like that. Appreciate you guys taking the time to look at it. Don't be afraid to check out my Patreon either. And uh, thank you guys, and uh, have a fun time there with you. Thank you.